If you like Toyotas and you like roll cages, you're gonna wanna stick around because I'm gonna make something cool happen inside of this FJ80. So some of you will be like, Dave doesn't own an FJ80, and you're right. I used to, but I don't anymore. I am actually part of this Onyx Off-Road Build Challenge, and I'm partnered up with Dirt Lifestyle Nate. So he got the bodywork and paint done on this. If you keep following along on Onyx's uh, YouTube page and Dirt Lifestyle's YouTube page, you will see all kinds of stuff on this rig, the paint job, uh, intro, suspension, wheels, tires, all kinds of stuff. So. Follow along on a few different places. Follow along here if you wanna see me do some fab work, roll cage, rock sliders, and some rear suspension. I am about to get started on this. I really don't have a great game plan, so you guys are gonna follow along as I figure it out as I go. I think that was all English. The goal here is that we build a cool vehicle that should be worthy of going on Ultimate Adventure. Ultimate Adventure is a off-road trip that I go on every year and I've become one of the cronies on that trip, which is pretty cool. It used to be with Four Wheel and Off-Road Magazine um, and now it is part of the Four Wheeler Network. And what is going on here is Onyx is sponsoring a build series and there's three teams of two people each so there's three rigs that are getting built. We're going to go on an awesome trip and basically it's all decided through viewer votes. Um, so if you go over to onyx.com or onyxoffroad.com, you'll be able to go and vote for who you want to see win this series. Um, the winner of the series gets Onyx's seat as the Onyx rep for Ultimate Adventure. So. First, first things first, you got to build a rig that meets all the criteria of Ultimate Adventure, which is, if I remember right, it's a roll cage, it is a winch bump, a winch, so lockers front and rear, 35-inch uh, tire minimum, fire suppression, basically just fire extinguisher, first aid kit, a bunch of normal stuff, uh, tool kits. So the big ticket items are a roll cage, 35s, and lockers, uh, and a winch. This one is rolling on 39s. It's already got a winch mount, so it's my job to get the roll cage done. I'm gonna get started on that, and once that's done, we'll tie in some rock sliders to it, and once that's done, we will button up some rear suspension work on it. That's enough talking, let's get to work. When I look in this rig and I try to figure out how I'm gonna do a roll cage, I'm basically looking for a few different things. A, where the seats are, which we don't have those. B, where I can tie into the roof. We've got a drop down for this sunroof that's kind of getting in my way at the moment. And C, kind of how much protection we're trying to get out of it. On this rig here, I basically feel like we need a roll cage structure over the rear seat area some triangulation down to the back. I don't really need to add a whole bunch of extra weight in tubing around the back hatch area. Um, and then I've got to get some bars up and forward and down and around the dash. So let's kind of start laying this out and see what is going to work best on this rig. Let's go dig the fender out and make a couple test pieces and figure out what we are doing on this rig. I'm going to be using this Rogue Fab Bender. This is a 20 foot stick of inch and three quarter, 120 wall, mild steel. I'm trying to get it off of my rack without it crashing into everything I own. And ruining stuff. Oh, come on. All right, come on out of there. I don't really have enough space on my chop saw table for this 
So I'm just gonna cut the first piece on the ground. That'll get us started. Next thing we need to do is find center line on this piece of tubing. And it's 12 footer. So we should be able to mark six foot. We get our center line marked out. Now we just need to figure out from the center line how far we want to start our bends for those top parts of the hoop. So what I'm trying to figure out when I start on this is kind of the width of the cab. The widest I could have this tube would be about 47 inches outside to outside. So let's go over here and figure out, I'll write that on my hand, hang on. So 47 is our max width. Then on this die, if I'd been to 90, that's going to be about seven inches wide. So if you take 47 and seven and seven, so, so 47 minus 14 is going to be 33. So if I go down here, what's half of 33? 16 and a half. I can come up from that center line, measure out 16 and a half. And in theory, this should be my first start of bend, bending that way. I'm gonna go over here and measure the same. All right, let's bend some tubing and see what happens. I bent my first piece. And this is what we've got. This was my test angle, which is just a cup. It's sort of my little cheater. And that is pretty close. This was at 75 degrees on the bender. I'll write that on here. And then we will measure where we were at. Start a bend to the outside. Start bend was there, outside's about seven. So we're pretty close to on the money for that. Let's uh, let's bend another another one of those so we at least have like our starting point. Let me go hold this thing up in there and see what we really got. All right, before I waste a piece of tube, we're gonna come over here and fit this and make sure that I've got everything right. This is pretty cool. You can see up there, there's a grab handle and I was able to fish the tubing up through so it kind of holds that side up in place. And then this side, I can get it to where I want it. And then we will find the center line of the car is like right here. Cool. So we'll mark center line here, then I'll come back and I'll measure how far out this was. That way on the other side, I can just take this measurement, put it over there, and that'll be the start of that bend. All right, all right, do a couple measurements and see if I did what I was trying to do. I don't think I did what I was trying to do. What the heck? I've had a chance to bend one hoop and I screwed that hoop up. So I am going to bend the second one. Let's see if I can get this one right. I've got it set up so that I should be at start a bend and putting my bend on this side of the line, much like I did on this one. So if all goes well, I'll put 75 degrees of bend in this and it'll end up being the right width and the right shape. All right, let's see how we did. We're at like 46 inch there. This should be pretty good. Let's figure out the width kind of down at this point in the cab and then figure out where our next little bend is gonna be. All 
I'm feeling kind of like the natural bend of the cab needs to be like kind of down here. So if I'm trying to get it to fit in this area. Cool. All right, what was that? 20 inches down, no wider than 57. So we're gonna line this up with the crack and the concrete here. And that will allow me to hook my tape measure in that. And that'll come down and figure out where my 20 mark is. 20. 20 down is right there. So we're in the ballpark. Basically, I know that I can't have this be any wider than it is right there. And I need to have a bend starting. So I'm going to probably have my start of bend actually be up in this area and then roll this way. That way I don't end up with a wider section. All right, let me lay this out. We'll put it in the bender and see how it all comes together. One more 20 degree bend and this main hoop should be the right shape. You guys are gonna love this. So I've been trying to fit this in these, this space that's gonna be a little bit farther back from the seat, but not totally in the foot room of the passengers. And I cut the carpet and there's actually like a drain hole and a little indention right here. And it seems like it's just about perfect for where this thing wants to live. There's wiring harness that's over to the side of it. And I think this is probably like a speaker wire or something. So I'm gonna take my hole saw, I'm gonna drill this out a little bit more, and then we're gonna see if I can slip that cage down through these holes here. If all goes well, then that'll drop down through, and eventually it'll tie in with a rock slider that's gonna be out here. So I'm gonna drill these holes out, and see where we end up. If this works out, this is going to be awesome. We've got a rocker box right here on the other side of that. If that tube can drop down through there, weld to the floor into the rocker box, this thing's going to be super strong. All right, both those holes are drilled. I'm going to go grab the tube and see if it fits. This is going to be so rad if it does. Jump to the other side and see. What we got going on? I okay, just need to trim these holes just a little bit with some snips or a grinder, and we'll get this dialed. Okay, that one is good. Let's go get the other side. It's pretty hard working on all this kind of stuff by yourself. There we go. Ah! Look at that. It's going to work. I love it. This is so rad. So now I just need to prop this thing up, kind of get it in place to where it's really going to live. Start figuring it out from there. Sick. That's so cool. I got this piece of aluminum that was like right about the exact size I needed. So I just threw a notch in the top of it and hopefully it will work to prop this thing up. 
something like that. So we got this one to fit pretty well. That's a totally good start. And now I'm going to come back here and start figuring out a rear hoop. This is like a factory seat mount on the rear fender wells. So I'm going to try to do a hoop that basically mirrors this one in shape, but I'll have it go from that base plate and then try to kind of follow the body line or the angle of the window and come up. It might be a little bit higher than this front hoop. We'll see how it kind of co how it goes. This is going to be the second hoop. This is the one that'll be back behind the rear passengers. So it should mirror the front one, but it'll end up resting up on top of those fender wells. So it doesn't have to be quite as tall right now. This one's going to be 75 degrees. I'm getting pretty close. Right there. Get this thing coming in. Kind of up there on that little platform. That fits perfect. I'm getting this sorted out for the rear hoop. I made these little 3 16 plates. These are three by four and drilled them out so that the holes line up with these old rear seat mounts. I kind of like working with factory seat mounts and factory seat belt mounts if I'm doing a cage just because it seems like there's a certain amount of engineering that went into making this stuff strong enough to mount a seat to so it's probably fine to tie this part of the roll cage into. Come on bar, go in your home. I think it's kind of gonna fit. Oh, geez, that's big and awkward. There we go. Huh, I think I'll probably put just a little bit of a kick in the top, kind of like I did in this one over here. You always want a little bit of a crown in a roll cage just so it doesn't try to like fold past center. And that'll also bring these feet in to the center of this plate a little bit more. But other than that, I think that's kind of the goal here. Get this one tacked in. And then I'm probably just going to work on the Mustang a little bit tonight. Shh. This is coming together pretty quick. All right. I've put a little bit of a bend in it and I will be back. Oh, sorry, carpet. All right, I'm looking through the side. That looks awesome. Oh, this thing looks cool. It's awesome when you get to do like your first, your first welds on it, kind of like solidifying, like that's where that's gonna live forever. It looks good, it's in the right spot. Now basically I need to get this one back to where it wanted to live. I propped that piece of aluminum tubing up on some vice grips, so this is actually right up against the headliner now. I went and cut a couple of spreader bars. Those are going to go from this hoop to that hoop. So I basically got to just sort of fit these up in there, tack them in place, and then when that's all tacked, then I can take this spacer bar out and undo these bolts back here and I should be able to lean this whole thing forward and down and finish welding the tops of these without burning the headliner up. Let's see if all that works. Sounds good in my head. I'm stoked. The cage is coming together really well. Uh, I think I'm done with this thing for the night. I'm gonna bust out a few welds here and there and on these base plates so that tomorrow when I come out here, I can kind of tilt this whole thing forward, finish weld it, and then we can start working on the front bars and probably a couple of kickers that go from here all the way to the back. So pretty good day all in all. It was felt good to kind of get in my groove again and finally like feel like I'm back at it, you know?
Cool. See you all tomorrow. It was ready for some Tuesday night fab work. Um, it was a long weekend. It was Memorial Day and I got some work done on this thing over the weekend. I got some work done around the house. I got some work done on the Mustang too. Now it's time to try and button up a bunch of this cage. I just got off of work. It's five something. We're gonna try and bust out either the front portion or the back portion on this and see what we can make happen. All right, here's the, there's rocks in my shoe. Here's the moment we've been waiting for to see if this actually works. I'm gonna take this bar out and we'll see if this cage kind of drops down. And it is. It's kind of cramming into the cramming into the carpet here. But I've got this drop down low enough to where I can get a good clean weld on it. Same with that one. And this one is like close enough to the door opening now that I can get a nice good weld on that. So I'd call that a win. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of go back around the base plates of these. And then I'll have to grind that little section because the bolt head was really hitting the tube pretty hard and I couldn't get a socket on it. So I'm going to have to kind of like do my weld and then go back with a little three inch grinder and sand that out. So let me, let me tape off some glass really quick so I don't ruin all the glass in this truck with weld splatter. And then we will weld this stuff up. Sweet. All right, let's weld some stuff. So, broke out the little welder. This thing kicks butt. Nice, looking good. Cool, I wish all of fabricating was welding, but it seems like welding is such a small part of it. It's like, this is the last like 10% of the job that gets all the glory. Headliner got a little bit of love up there, but it's all right. It's looking good. All right, I'm gonna, I guess I gotta weld these real quick and then we'll slide this thing back up in place and start working on the next stage. Cage is up, it's bolted in, and I went underneath and I actually welded these tubes to the bottom of the sheet metal a little bit, so we will see if I can pull this out of here and the thing doesn't, doesn't fall down. It didn't fall down. Sweet, that is great. Let's move on to the, some more tubes on this thing before it gets dark. Look at how clean that looks. Just right up there to the headliner. That's perfect, I love it. All right, I am going to, I think I'll probably do these back bars down and we'll kind of get that handled. I'm back in town. I was four days out in New Mexico messing around with a build for Runs Good on Motor Trend. Now it's time to get back to this, finishing up this roll cage. I think we left off with B pillar, C pillar, all kind of buttoned up, spreader bars in. I built some plates to go onto the floor so that I can get a diagonal D pillar kind of bar in here. And then I think that's going to be a wrap on this. I talked to Nate while I was gone and he isn't super chomping at the bit to have a front half roll cage in here. 
So I'm totally fine with that. This cage, if you do roll this, it's going to stop the roof from coming down on your head. And I don't know how hardcore this rig is really gonna be, so we don't really need to have a total jungle gym in here. So I'm gonna finish up these diagonal bars back here and we will button this thing up today. All right, let's get busy, burning daylight. It's always kind of hard coming back to a project that you, I don't even really remember where I was at leaving this, but I guess I had just built these plates and was kind of mocking them up. So I guess it's time to finish those. I'm gonna drill, mark these holes, drill the floor, and then we will uh, we'll get these things bolted in place and then figure out what the next step is. Let's see here, what do I got? A little etch prime, a little satin black. I'm gonna paint the bottom sides of those plates just since they're gonna kind of bolt in right now and then the tube's gonna get welded to it. So you'll really never be able to just like take this, dang it, you'll never really be able to take this roll cage out to repaint the bottom sides of stuff. So I'm gonna take care of some of that right now. Oh boy, look at that. Self-painting. This is a problem. Oh boy. Oh no. What do I do? Oh no. I swear this never happens. Let's go outside. I think I might have just wasted a can of paint. Oh yeah, that's a problem. Hmm. All right, so that can's done. Cool, we'll go ahead and throw some Satin Canyon Black on here. Again, this is the stuff that's sandwiched against the floor. So even if you're gonna like go back and paint the cage a different color. This isn't really gonna affect any of that. I'll even go in here and bust a little paint where those holes are, just so that the body itself doesn't rust. Let's see how we're gonna make this piece fit. Those plates are all bolted in and tight, so it's time to measure for this bar. I'm gonna take, I know I want it to intersect right there where the other one comes in, and I need it to come down to this plate. So at bare minimum, if I was doing it straight, it needs to be 50 inch long piece. But I think what I'm gonna do is have a little kick at the top so it comes out. So it welds nice to that and then comes at like a 30 degree angle, comes down and then hits here. So what I'm thinking is like have a six inch straight piece, 30 degree angle, come down, have like a 30 degree angle and then drop to here. So I'm gonna probably bend one end first and fit one end leave it long and then it'll tell me where I would need to start the kick down here. So let's go cut a piece and be safe. We'll cut it 55 and throw a little bend in it. Uh, I haven't been out, haven't been out here in a while. I'm trying to figure out what tools I have where. I got my Earplugs, my glasses and gloves. I'm ready to go. Get the old bender fired up. Uh, that's more than I need. All right, let's grab some tubing and we'll figure this out. How is this gonna work out? Let's go see. Got a piece of tubing with a 30 degree bend on it. We're gonna go and 
fit it up in here and see what it tells me to do. I kind of like if this bin starts, if the bend is like right here, kind of between the, the grab handle and the tube here. So I'll come, and I feel like that's enough of an angle. It'll look kind of cool, but not be like a total 45. So I'm feeling like if I shorten this to here, I'm feeling like if I take about five inches off of this, that'll get me sort of in the ballpark to where I want to start that. So let me go and cut that off and we will refit and see how it looks. Cool. So I went ahead and bent this one at 50 degrees, that one at 30. And now I can start shortening this one up and as I shorten it, it'll bring it in as it swings down. And you kind of want to just creep up on that pad and not overdo it. So I'm going to go cut like three inches off here, see where it lands, and then I'll creep up on getting it to that pad. I'll still let it be a little long, and then I'll take up the last little bit from the uh, notch up top. Check it out. I took like about four inches off of that tube, and we're in the ballpark now. It's, it's resting right on the edge of the plate now, so I feel like if I take about an inch off, it'll drop it to where it's kind of on the plate. And then I can like start drawing it forward even a little bit more by cleaning up the notch up at the other end of the tube. Heck yeah, I'd call that a win. This thing fits right where I want it to, and then check out this fitment on this tube. That is good to go. So I can now sort of take this out and I will duplicate the size of it and the bins, but I won't notch the end of the new one yet because it's actually going to get notched opposite since it's going into a corner that is opposite of the one that I just fit it for. Man, it looks cool. All right, check this angle out. That looks good. That's intersecting right where that is. That angle looks good. Give it a look through the side. Yep, we're good to go. I'm gonna weld this puppy up. Looks good. Yeah. There we have it. I think that's it for the roll cage on this for now. There's plenty of room to add to it when seats go in, if it needs a harness bar. I don't have seats, so I can't really get too into that, but we've got a good roll cage in here. It's gonna be safe. It'll pass tech for ultimate adventure. So all in all, that is a win. That's it for this dirt head shed. Go over to onxmaps.com, vote for the team that you think is worthy of getting a chance to go on Ultimate Adventure. Keep following along and you'll see another cool adventure with these rigs that where we're kind of battling it out for that spot. Thanks again, I'll see y'all next time.